All right, everybody, this is COVID calculus video number two. In this one, we're actually going to be trying to minimize cost rather than maximize volume. And what we're going to be looking at is a window. And particularly, it's a window called a Norman window, which looks something like that. And I did my best there. So we're stuck with having, we want to create a window that has an area of 20 square feet. And we have cost based on whether or not the frame is straight or whether or not it's rounded. So we have a formula called cost. And cost is going to be equal to $20 for every straight section. So I'm just going to draw a box there. Plus $25 for every rounded section. OK, so if we're going to expand this out a little bit, let's actually try to come up with what these are. So first, we'll talk about the cost formula. And we're going to call it C. So again, it's $20 for the straight sections. And what we're doing is building a frame. So the frame is going to have this side, this side, and this side. So to make things a little easier, I'm going to do this. So we have a center point, and we have a radius. Uh, in addition to that, we have a height. So height is going to be from here to here, and the radius is going to be this, this section here. So the base of this square section is going to be 2 times the radius. So just two of these radiuses put together, that's going to make our base. So we're going to have a perimeter, which means we have a one side that's called height, one side that's called 2R, and one side that's called height. So there's two height sides, 2 times H, plus 2 radius. And that's our square section. Then we're going to have 25 times the perimeter of the rounded section. The perimeter of the rounded section is a circle, so you'll just do pi r squared, or excuse me, 2 pi r for the circumference, that's the perimeter of a circle. But in our case, it's just half of a circle. So because of that, it's just going to be pi r. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses there. OK, so here's our formula for cost. And we also have a formula for area. So I'm going to move that over here. And that's going to be the area of the square plus the area of the rounded section. And we'll get to that in a little bit. We're trying to minimize cost, which means we have a little freedom on how we change this radius and how we change this height. And they, they have to be somewhat coordinated because there's going to be a total area that we need to stay within. So I'm going to put a star by this as the thing that we're going to try to improve. Specifically, we're going to be working with something in regards to this graph here. If I graph the radius compared to the cost, I'm going to get something like this, where when I have almost no radius whatsoever, you just get a really, really, really tall, slender window. You're going to have an enormously long side. Um, in fact, it's going to be about 20 on either height, right? Because the radius is going to be so small. And then if I create a huge radius, which is just going to be an entirely rounded section with almost no height, uh, it's also going to be very expensive. So here's some max dollar amount. And this would be zero dollars, right? Clearly, we're not going to pay zero dollars, but we also don't want to pay the max maximum amount of dollars either. In between this, we're going to get something like this. Let me redraw that circle. Sure, that parabola. There we go. Okay, and we're aiming to get the lowest cost, which is right down here. And particularly, we're looking for a, a radius length that gives us this cost, right? So if I do a little dotted line there, there we go. That's what we're aiming at. And in order to locate that, we're going to focus on the slopes. So the slope from here to here is negative, and the slope from here to here is positive. Where this goes from negative to positive, it equals, the slope would equal 0. That can also be called the derivative of the cost function is equal to 0, which just means the slope of this equals 0. So that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the derivative of the cost function that would equal 0, and that will give us this lowest point. But there's one hang up here. When we're going to calculate the derivative, we want only one variable to do it in. And we want that variable to be r. We could have it be h, but r is a little bit more prevalent, so we're going to make it h. So we need to somehow find a way to substitute for h. And in order to do that, we're going to actually use our area. But before we get there, let's expand this out and kind of simplify it. So 20 times 2h is going to be 40h plus 20 times 2r is going to be 40r plus 25 pi r. So this is going to be our simplified cost formula. I'm going to go ahead and draw a really dark box around that so we can find it easily because we're going to have a bit of work here. 
Okay, so now we're going to get into the area and we're going to try to find a way to substitute for h. So I'm going to have area and we're get, we need to find the area of this box and we need to find the area of this half circle. So the area of the box is just going to be the base times the height, which is 2rh, right? 2r is the base, height is the uh, height, plus the area of the semicircle. Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, we have half of a circle, so it'll be half pi r squared. Okay, and I happen to know that the area is 20. So I take that, I say 20 equals 2rh plus 1 half pi r squared. Let's go ahead and move down just a little bit. So I'm aiming to solve for h. I want to be able to substitute h in my cost formula. So what I'm going to do first is move this to the other side by subtracting it. 20 minus 1 half pi r squared divided by, well, oh, excuse me, before I get there, let's back up. That's going to equal 2rh, okay? Well, I want the h by itself, so I can divide 2r on both sides, right? That'll cancel out, and I get this. So h equals 20 minus 1 half pi r squared over 2r. All right, so now I have my h substitution. I need to plug that in right up here. So it's gonna go right there. Okay, so let's move over a little bit. I'm gonna rewrite this cost function. Cost equals 40h plus 40r plus 25 pi r. Plugging our h in, we have 40 times 20 minus 1 half pi r squared over 2r. That takes care of this. Plus 40r plus 25 pi r. Okay, we have our formula now. Again, let's see if we can simplify it out a little bit. C equals, well, 2 and 40 will kind of cancel each other out. The 40 becomes a 20. The 2 goes away in the r state, so now I have 20 minus 1 half pi r squared over r. Again, plus 40r plus 25 pi r. Okay, so we're getting there. So now we're trying to find where the derivative of this function equals to zero. So first thing we need to do is actually get the derivative. So again, let's, let's kind of continue on with this. If I multiply 20 times 20, I get 400, and I'm gonna split these up to make it a little easier. 400 over r, that's an r, minus 20 times 1 half is 10 pi r squared over r plus 40r plus 25 pi r, okay? Now, let's see if we can simplify it a little more. This r squared can go in, it cancels out the r, so I get c over, I'm gonna write 40r to the negative one. That just means I'm gonna invert this one, right? So I'm gonna bring it underneath. So that's another way we can write that. And then I have 10 pi r, the squared gives away, not the r, plus 40r plus 25 pi r, we're almost there. Well, 25 pi r and negative 10 pi r can join, so I get 400 r to the negative one, plus when you add, add, take negative 10 and 25, that equals 15 pi r plus an r there, 40 r. Okay, so we've simplified it enough. Let's find this derivative. So we have c prime equals, well this negative one is gonna drop down and this becomes negative 400 r. Then I subtract one from negative one, you get negative two. That's the derivative for that. Then I do plus, the r will disappear here, r to the first power, you subtract one from that, it becomes zero. So 15 pi plus, again, the r will disappear, 40. Okay, so we're getting there. Well, c prime, I'm looking for where it equals zero. So this becomes zero. This is negative 400 r to the negative two plus 15 pi, plus, oops, I forgot another r. Oh no, I didn't forget another r. Plus 40, okay. 
Well, I want the R by itself. So I'm gonna move this whole section to the other side by adding it. 400, R to the negative two, plus, oh, R to the negative two equals 15 pi plus 40. Again, I want this R by itself, so I'm gonna divide out by 400, and I get R to the negative two equals 15 pi plus 40 over 400. Okay, so now there's one more step we're gonna do before we hit up the calculator. So, R to the negative two. That's the same as one over R squared. If I say one over R squared equals 15 pi plus 40 over 400, and I want to solve for r squared. Well, I can do one of two things. I can multiply everything over here by r squared and then divide everything over here by all that, and it's, it's a little confusing. But the other thing you could do is literally flip everything. If I flip this to the top and I flip this to the top, they remain equal, right? So it's like saying, what would I say? Like two-fifths equals four-tenths. That's the same as saying five halves equals 10 fourths, right? So I just flipped both sides. So what I'm gonna do here is say R squared equals 400 over 15 pi plus 40. And then we're gonna calculate that. So bear with me while I pull up my calculator. Let's see here. Okay, so. 15 times pi equals 47.123 plus 40. So this is gonna be 400 over 87.123. And then I take 400 divided by 87.123 and I get 4.59. Well, I'm almost there. This is R squared. I don't want R squared. So I say r equals the square root of 4.59, which equals, let me go ahead and hit square root, 2.14. Okay, so our radius, if we go back, that gives us the lowest cost equals 2.14. This is gonna be in feet, feet, uh, feet excuse me, because we're looking at feet to begin with there, 20 square feet. Okay, now we gotta figure out what is this cost? So now we're looking for this value. So what we need to do is find our simplest cost formula, which is right here, and plug in the value of 2.14, okay? So let's move over. We have, again, we're gonna write out the formula. Cost equals 400 divided by 2.14 plus 15 pi times 2.14 plus 40 times 2.14. Okay, so again, I'm gonna pull out my calculator. Let's see what we get. So 400 divided by 2.14, this equals 186.9. I'm gonna round off quite a bit here, so if my answer's a little wrong, it's okay. Okay, 15 times pi times 2.14 is 98.96. Again, I rounded a little bit there, so forgive me. Let me make sure of that. 15 times pi times 2.14, no, 100.8, excuse me. That was a little further off than I wanted to be. 100. Point eight plus 40 times 2.14, 85.6. If I add all these up, 85.6 plus 100.8 plus 186.9, my total cost, my least, my, my minimum cost that I can have with this type of window at uh, the given amount of cost per straight frame and per curve frame is $373.30. Okay, so backing out, 
let's go ahead and see what we got. Okay, so we did a little bit of a, a direction here. We started over here. Here's our image. So we have number one here. We moved down. We found our height substitution right here. We talked about how what we're actually looking for here, and we inserted our, our new height substitution into our cost formula. We went down, solved for all those, and found the given radius that would give us the cheapest value, and then we solved for that value by plugging it into the cost formula. So I hope that was helpful. If COVID keeps up, I'll have finished the entire calculus book I'm working on. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll be happy to help where I can.